Hey guys, what's up? John from Segments here. Welcome to Ecom Data Talk, a uh, media expert series. Today we're joined by Nelson Jordan, an uh, e commerce uh, marketing expert. Welcome, Nelson. Lovely. Thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, to start off, can you tell the viewers um, who you are, what do you do, and uh, what's something not on your LinkedIn profile? Perfect. So, I am the head of e commerce at the e commerce profits. So we're, we work on a couple of different sides. We work on the agency side, helping clients to improve their e-commerce store. That's everything from Facebook, social media marketing, getting their tracking in place through Google Analytics, email flows, um, and on-site conversion as well. The other side is we also own um, an e-commerce store ourselves, so we practice what we preach. Um, and that's uh, a, a fashion brand uh, based in the US. Cool. And uh, how about something that's not on your LinkedIn profile? Um, just because it's at the top of my mind, understandably, uh, I got married this summer. So I, I now have a wife, which is kind of daunting and exciting at the same time. Um, I also live in Valencia in Spain. Uh, we've been over here for the last couple of years and absolutely love it. Well, first of all, congratulations. Um, Thank you very that's much. A big step. I'm so happy for you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you first kind of got into the biz, right? Um, how did you become an expert? Yeah, so um, I first started, uh, well, I got a master's degree in marketing and then got my first role um, back in the UK um, just as a standard kind of uh, catch all marketer, I suppose, and then quickly realized that my degree hadn't really taught me anything about how to do uh, <laughs> marketing in the real world, just right. kind of theory. So I'm sure lots of people have encountered that. Um, and from there, I went to work for a, a Japanese company called Hitachi for a short while. And then I wanted to get more exposure to a lot more clients. So I made the decision to switch from working client side for a company to working for an agency. Um, and in my, my first role, which was a very, uh, very busy time, I, I had between 14 and 15 clients at any one time. Um, so kind of uh, straight into the deep end there. Mm -hmm. um, but I started in, in social media, um, working across both B2B and B2C um, companies, and then moved across to PPC and SEO, and obviously this is over the course of a few years before moving on to conversion rate optimization. So after a while, I wanted to move out on my own. I've always wanted to own my own agency. So that was the uh, always going to be the next step. And uh, in January of this year, we made that happen. Congratulations again. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like you had a lot of exposure across different aspects of marketing, um, social, uh, PPC, SEO, uh, all sorts of things. So um, is that like, is that your secret sauce? Like, how do you actually help brands? Yeah. So one of, one of the things that we're able to bring to the table is that kind of diversity of knowledge. If you think, for example, if you take on, uh, if you're an e-commerce company and you take on a social media agency, chiefly what they'll do is, especially these days, it will be mainly paid advertising and a little bit of organic, um, mm -hmm. organic kind of posting to, to the Facebook pages. Optimize your campaigns, getting those campaigns up and running, putting the creative together, making sure the Facebook pixel's working okay. Um, and kind of optimizing those campaigns as they go. What they won't necessarily do is take a look at how that fits into the marketing and the business as a whole. They won't necessarily think of, okay, well, how does that affect the number of email subscribers? Mm -hmm. What are the quality of those people that we're, we're, we're bringing on in terms of lifetime value? They won't necessarily think about the, the margin that's involved for a particular product. If you have that kind of knowledge of all of the different moving parts, then you tend to think a little bit differently. You tend to think about you know, traffic acquisition, customer management and customer service, mm -hmm. um, but also like the profitability of the business as well. Gotcha. So it sounds like instead of having a singular focus or a micro optimization, what you can bring to the table is a whole picture micro optimization, looking across all the different aspects of your business, different funnels, and then try to pick the best path forward. 
Yeah, definitely. You know, really dive deep into a company, look at, you know, how many products they're selling, looking at the, the margins, traffic acquisition as a whole, look at how the site's converting, look at how they're monetizing their email subscribers. And it's great to be able to have that knowledge and put it all together because your normal agency would be able to optimize the, the Facebook ads to perhaps drive down your, your cost per click. But right. what we right. might do as well as doing that is also look at how um, the users are actually moving through like the landing page, um, how they're actually going through the process, if there's any way to upsell them and increase the average order value as well. So I think the value comes from that holistic view. Can you actually share with us one of your expert tips um, and maybe we can go through an example as well? So one of the things that we've been working on a lot recently for our own store is how to turn one-time purchases into uh, multi-purchases. So people that buy two, three, four. I mean, we've got some people on the store that bought 10 to 15, uh, you know, transactions 10 to 15 right. times, which is, is great. The, the reason that we do this is because what a lot of people don't necessarily realize the first time they're involved in e-commerce is that it's really, really hard to make it work, to be profitable if you're only getting people to buy from you one time, it becomes really, really difficult. The margins get really, really tight. So one of the approaches we sometimes take for, for growth is to minimize the amount of return on advertising spend that we're, we're getting to bring in new people because we know that we're able to, to turn them from one-time subscribers into to two-time and three-time subscribers. And the beauty is there, if you were spending $20 um, to bring in a customer and they were only worth $30 to you because they were interacting and completing one transaction with you, suddenly you're able to spend a lot more to attract um, that person in the first place because you know they're worth more to you in, uh, in, in the back end in the subsequent right. transactions. Because you're able to spend more to acquire the customers, you're able to knock your competitors out of whatever auctions that you're, you're talking about. If it's, you know, Facebook, if it's Google ads, you're, you can spend more per customer and still be profitable and your competitors just won't be able to compete. If you're talking about non-paid and uh, organic, let's talk about SEO for a second. If you're making more money, that means that you can invest more in your content creation and your link building. And you, you get kind of this flywheel effect. So that's really, really important to do. Sounds great. Yeah. And at segments, we actually see that uh, the loyal customers with three or more purchases sometimes average around three to seven times higher uh, lifetime value, customer lifetime value uh, than one-time purchasers. So how would, um, how, what would that look like? How would you convert uh, one-time purchases into repeat customers? One of the things that I like about segments in particular is that you're able to do it based on uh, their behavior versus other people's behavior. Segments actually tells you how that data compares, how their behavior compares against other people that have been in that same situation. Most email CRM systems that where you're building out flows will do things based on like a certain time limit. In, in many cases, it's quite an arbitrary time limit. And you might say, okay, we're a, a fashion store and apparel brand or something like that this customer or this bunch of customers hasn't purchased from us in the last 30 days so let's send them an email for a 15 percent discount okay that's better than not doing anything for sure but the beauty of segments i, I feel is that you're able to use that data uh, a little bit more intelligently you're, you're able to say average duration between these two purchases is 33 days if people get further than this they're at risk of churning so we need to complete an action here to bring those people back in to complete a second purchase that, yep exactly so uh, with our opportunity grid you can actually look across your customer base uh, on their life cycle number of purchases as well as their conversion risk would you be able to go through an example next yeah i'd love to one-time buyers are expensive to acquire, and for each new customer you have to answer their questions, convince them to buy your product, and then service them. And if we go out to find more of those one-time customers, we just acquire more people that act the same, and so come with the same amount of baggage. So, what can we do here? Two things. 
But first, we need to increase repeat buyers. And secondly, we need to do that as cheaply as possible. With a lot of e-com businesses, they break even or lose money on the first order. Maybe if you have an average order value of $100, it might cost you $40 to make and deliver the goods and another $60 to acquire that customer, for example. So it's only on the second or the third orders that you're really making your money. So if you can bring that same customer back cheaply, your margin is a lot higher because your customer acquisition cost just got a lot lower. So really one of the key ways to do this is automated email campaigns, which are also called flows or trigger campaigns, but really they're all kind of the same thing. Today the example we're looking at is people who have already purchased from you once, so they're actually a customer, but have yet to make their next purchase. We can get quite complex with these, but I don't want to overwhelm anybody. The key here is just to get something in place to help convert one-time purchases and turn those into multi-purchases. So today we're going to be looking at a six email sequence. So the first step, which is just here, is what we call a bounce back campaign. This is an email that we send to a customer straight after they purchase, and I'm talking about as soon as your email provider allows, but definitely on the same day. Um, this one goes out as soon as somebody has purchased. So They've just ordered a product from your site. They're about as engaged with your service or business as it's possible to be. They may even still have their credit card out. We want to give the customer a second offer to come back and buy something else immediately. Uh, this won't show up as on your analytics as an increase in average order value because it will be a separate purchase. But we think of this as an increase in same day average order value. So. The key here is to either pick a product that's under $10, so really, really cheap, or just to give them a discount code that will allow them to buy the product for that amount or less. You'll also want to select a filter or option where this campaign isn't sent out if they originally purchased the same item that you want to give them a discount on. You don't want to annoy people who bought product X by immediately sending them a discount for that same product just after they purchased. So the idea here is that we're getting somebody who's already committed and, and might have bought um, a product at you know, regular price to then add just a small uh, product onto that and do so really, really cheaply. So the second email here is another reminder that we send out just a few hours later, um, again, with the same sort of concept with again just trying to push that cheap item um, and just kind of eke out an extra few dollars where we can. Next we want to take a look at the data um, that we've got about the orders and see which products tend to be the most popular second purchase. So we want to take a look into the customer data and look at customers who've purchased at least twice and see if any commonalities arise between them. We're really looking for products that were particularly popular, and also we're looking to find out how much time typically elapses between purchases. Do people normally wait 30 days before purchasing again, or is it more like 60? So they typically start by buying a t-shirt, for example, and then later coming back for a jumper, if you're uh, in the fashion game. Are there any patterns you can see? But one of the things I want to say here is if you're not in the position to examine that sort of data, either you, you don't have it or you don't necessarily have the skill set to examine it, then you can just use your best selling items for now and then you can get more advanced and recreate some of these automated flows further down the line. Don't let it stop you from, from just getting on with it. So in this case, we might pick... Um, uh, a product that is our best seller and we might say okay we want to wait for 30 days here. You'll also see that these have filters on them so one of the filters I put on this flow is that they have placed order zero times and that's only since starting this flow because obviously I don't want to take out people who made that initial purchase. So I don't want to annoy people by sending them commercially oriented emails if they have already made that second purchase. So we're then waiting um, seven days here, but just to uh, talk about this product, uh, this email, sorry, 
In this case, we want to send people an email highlighting that jumper, you know, for in the, the case of the t-shirt um, sale being previous. We want to send an email highlighting that jumper 30 days after they've made their first purchase. We want to be sending this email here at full margin with no discounts. Then the next email is in the same vein. It's be about a similar subject, um, but we've waited another week, and if they haven't uh, purchased yet, we're going to send them uh, another email, again with that filter on, that they've placed the order zero times since starting that flow. Um, if they still haven't purchased a week later, then we're going to give them 15% discount, and if they still haven't purchased by then, we're going to give them the 20% discount. If you don't want to give monetary discounts, then you can also do things like offering a free gift or free shipping. And if you want to see what the actual emails um, we send, so you've got some examples, you can take some of the copy and see the layouts, then that will be included in the PDF for download. Okay, so Nelson, thanks for sharing the example with us today. That's super helpful. Um, no so how can people find you? So uh, you can either go to our website, which is thecommerceprofits.com, and profits is P-R-O-F-I-T-S, um, <laughs> not profits as in, uh, as in holy. Um, or you can find us on Facebook or Instagram. Cool. Thanks, Nelson. So we'll put those links back uh, at the uh, description as, uh, so people can find you online. Um, so any final words for the viewers? Yeah, I, I would encourage you all um, to give segments a, a try out. I found it very, very useful. We're actually running it on several uh, of our client stores at the moment and on our own store. Um, it's helped to really increase things like average order value and number of transactions. So really, really good. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that, yes, e-commerce is, is really, really tough. Um, but it can also be profitable if you approach it in the long, uh, in the right way. Um, if you need any help with it, um, please get in touch. Uh, be happy to have a chat uh, anytime. Always just love discussing e-commerce. So um, look forward to hearing from you. Okay, cool. Well, thanks everyone. So that's it. Um, so we've heard from Nelson today uh, about the importance of um, email marketing as well as looking at growth holistically across different channels. Uh, it's not just one single channel, but also looking at how all the ch channels and traffic and acquisition affects each other. Um, it's all moving together, if you will. You also, also shared it with us a very valuable example today on how to turn first-time customers into repeat customers. Uh, for people who want to get the access to that example, please look at the link below and uh, we'll put that out there for you to uh, be able to download. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, like our channel and share it with your friends and you know peers. And uh, don't forget data is power and uh, we want to give e-commerce data powers back to the people. So join us and start growing today.